Hey, so I'm continuing in the series on things that Christians say that aren't necessarily in the Bible. And I got some feedback on my other one. And I just want you to know that I'm not trying to criticize people who say these things or, you know, in any way bring judgment. What I'm just trying to do is get you to think about what we're saying and say, you know, are we saying things that we actually mean? Do we mean what we're actually saying? Or are we just saying things because we've heard it all of our life? And so today, for this week, we're going to look at one that's even more controversial than the one we looked at last week. So today we're going to look at the saying, uh, God works in mysterious ways, or maybe you heard it as the Lord works in mysterious ways. And this one, a lot of people are probably going to say, well, okay, so just because those words are not in the Bible doesn't mean that that thought isn't in the Bible. And I understand that because, you know, oftentimes we're surprised at what God does or the way he does something seems really strange to us. And so it's very easy to say, yeah, sure, God does work in mysterious ways. But let's actually take a look at what the Bible really does say. So first of all, and following with the uh, format of this, is the question is, where does this saying come from? Well, it's actually taken from Isaiah 55 verses 8 and 9, and those verses are just slightly taken out of context. So what it says is, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. And so while it's true that God does do things that we may not think of, or maybe that we have trouble explaining, uh, you know, everything that God has done or he is doing, this doesn't make it a mystery. Now, in the Old Testament, there's actually several verses that do say and declare that the people didn't know what God was doing or that God does things in ways that are not typical for people. And we, we saw right here in this verse in Isaiah, which is the most famous of them, you know, that, that it says, you know, his, his ways are so much higher than our ways. And so we tend to take those verses like that and we just claim them whenever we encounter a situation we don't understand, something has happened in our lives that we can't explain. We look at a verse like that and we say, well, God's ways are just higher than my ways. His ways, his thoughts are not my thoughts. And so, you know, God just works in mysterious ways. Well, here's the problem with that. Here's why this thinking is wrong. Number one, it puts God out of our grasp. And while, yes, God is much bigger than us and wiser than us, you know, he did make us in his image and he always lets his people in on what he is doing. And in fact, if our spirits are united with his spirit, as it declares all throughout Romans and Galatians and Ephesians and most of the entire New Testament, then how is it that we wouldn't understand his ways? If we're united with him, if we're made in his image, wouldn't we be able to understand his ways? Well, in Isaiah chapter 45, verses 19, it actually says, so this is actually the same man speaking that said, you know, that declared that God said his thoughts are not our thoughts. In Isaiah 45, 19, he says, I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I did not say to the seed of Jacob, seek me in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteousness and I declare things that are right. You know, that I have not spoken in secret. What God is saying is, yeah, my thoughts may be higher than your thoughts. My ways are higher than your ways, but it doesn't mean I'm keeping it a secret from you. Just because God is wiser than us and smarter than us doesn't mean he's hiding it and shrouding it in mystery. Maybe just because we don't understand him doesn't mean he's doing something that's incomprehensible. It might just mean we haven't taken the time to understand him. In Amos 3.7, he says, Surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secret to his servants, the prophets. Now, I know not everyone declares themselves a prophet, and despite, you know, what, whatever you believe about prophecy, that's for a different video. But what God is saying is basically in the Old Testament, you know, his people that he spoke to directly were his prophets. Well, today we have the Spirit of Christ in us, and he speaks directly to us as individuals. We can all hear his voice. And so in the Old Testament where he says he doesn't do anything unless he's revealing it to his prophets, the truth is he doesn't do anything in your life or around that he's not revealing to you when we take the time to listen. So God's not really working in mysterious ways. He may do things that we wouldn't have thought of, but that doesn't mean that it's a mystery. 
because he's saying it to us. If someone in our life did something that we didn't understand, but then they took the time to explain it to us later, we wouldn't go, well, that's such a mysterious person. We would just go, well, I didn't understand it at first. Then I talked to them. Now I get it. And so God doesn't want us to not understand him. You know, he desires a relationship with us. He wants to commune with us. You know, we, most churches take communion. The word communion means fellowship. God did everything that he did on the cross to bring us into a relationship with himself so that he can have fellowship and communion with us, not so that he can just be a big mystery that we cannot understand. And this way of thinking uh, makes it seem like it's impossible to ever understand or get to know God or to know his ways or, you know, to be like him. And so the Bible declares that we are to think like him, that we are to be in his image. And so that would be impossible if this was actually true. The other thing that the Bible says in the New Testament is that we've been given the mind of Christ. Now, it says it a few times, but I'm just going to pull up one verse. In 1 Corinthians 2.16, it says, For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? Now, if you end that verse there, you would say, yeah, God works in mysterious ways. Like, who could know the mind of Christ? Who could know him? And, you know, that's like this question. Well, the thing is, Paul, in writing this in 1 Corinthians, he's he's quoting something from the Old Testament. But then he moves this into a New Testament promise as he finishes out that verse. Listen to the verse in its entirety. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. As New Testament believers, God has not left us in the dark. We certainly are able to understand God and what he is doing because we've been given the mind of Christ. Our spirits are united with Christ. I want to emphasize that a lot. We are united with him, and so his ways don't have to be mysterious to us. Yes, there may be things in moments where we're like, I don't understand what's happening, but almost always you can look back on things in your life and go, I now see what God was doing. Well, that doesn't make it a mystery. That just means you didn't understand it at the time, but as you spent time with God, as you saw things now everything began to make sense. It's not really a mystery when it begins to make sense. So what should it be instead of God works in mysterious ways? Well, I guess it's hard to say exactly what I would replace that with, but I guess I would say I may not understand what God is doing right now, but I have the mind of Christ and I know that he will reveal it to me. You know, we should understand that just that because God can see a bigger picture um, it makes it sometimes feel like we don't understand what's going on. Why did this thing happen? When, but God has this amazing view of everything. And so it makes it feel like I don't understand. But if we ask him, he will reveal his ways to us. The Bible's clear that when we ask God, he answers us and talks to us. We can acknowledge that God may do things differently than we would have. I mean, that's generally a good thing because you know, there's a lot of things in me that I wouldn't want to see coming out of God. Um, so he does things differently than we would have. And he's wiser than I am. And he's more powerful than I am. And, you know, whatever. But if we understand that he wants to speak to us, that he desires to reveal himself to us, then when we sp spend time with him, we know that we can understand him and get to know him and understand who he is and what motivates him. So just as a person may seem mysterious until you get to know them, God's ways may seem mysterious until you get to know him. So if you find yourself constantly saying, well, God works in mysterious ways and you don't understand what he's doing, I would encourage you to spend more time with him, to get into that secret place, to get into that place where it's just you and him, where you can get in there and just ask God, talk to him, ask him to reveal more of who he is. You know, even Paul said, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. If somehow I may attain to the resurrection of the, of the dead. Paul, his main goal was just to get to know Christ and to get to know him more and more and more. But just because you can continually grow in your knowledge of someone doesn't mean that they're mysterious or that their ways are mysterious to you, particularly when the Bible declares that we do have the mind of Christ. So we don't want to be caught up in the Old Testament way of thinking where God only spoke to specific people or that he was unattainable 
because he hadn't given his spirit and poured his spirit on all people. Rather, we're in the age where God has poured his spirit out on us. We have the spirit of Christ and we have the mind of Christ. So I'm into the second week of this. I still don't know how to end these videos. There's definitely no catchphrase here. Uh, if you come up with a good thing that you think I should end this video with, and I'm not accepting closing with the Jurassic Park theme song, because a few people actually said that that's how I should end it. Uh, but if you come up with an idea, put it in the comments. Otherwise, the end.